From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. The first headline that I have for you today is so startling and such a blessing to me, I can't get over it. It's, it's really good news, not bad news at all. Scientists find seven possible sisters of planet Earth. You know, we have no idea what's out there. The heavens declare the glory of God. And it shows his handiwork. And I tell you, we're going to be talking about that in just a moment. Isn't that great? Then going on. Egypt and Jordan. This really surprised me, friends. A two-state solution is non-negotiable. I never imagined that Jordan would say that. Maybe Egypt, but the two together now. I've gone together and said, there's no, there's no argument about it. It has to be. And also, this burdens my heart very much. And I'm so happy to have our guest who has experienced being a pastor for many, many years. Empty pews on the rise. It's heading up. More churches are empty than not empty. i never forget the last time Jack and I were in Europe. We went to just visit some churches, all empty. Nobody there. Pastor only. Maybe 10 people. Oh, my, oh, my, we need to be, certainly be praying about that one, too. But I do want to say from Jack once again, give the people my love. That's the last thing he said today as I left home. And tell them that I miss them and that my prayers are with all of you. And uh, my, oh, my, he's getting better all the time. So keep him right at the top of your prayer list, will you please? And then I do want to say it's a pleasure, as I mentioned, to have our guest with us once a day, uh, again, Dr. Dave Williams. Now, you know, he did serve as pastor of Mount Hope Church in Lansing, Michigan, for more than 30 years. And as I said, in that time, thousands of ministers trained through the Mount Hope Bible Training Institute. And uh, my husband went there. And I did too, and we visited that church. We're very impressed with what they were doing in training young men and women to serve the Lord. And during his tenure, they also had 43 new Mount Hope churches in the United States, over 300 in West Africa, South Africa, Zimbabwe, and 200 in Asia, and so many, many other things that they've done for Christ. Welcome once again, Dr. Williams, to our program. Thank you, Dr. Rexell. It's a joy to be back with you again. Thank you so much. Thank you for the honor and the privilege. It's a blessing to have you. It really, really Thank is. You. Thank you. And getting to that first headline, Dr. Williams, it's just amazing. Blesses my heart so much. And as I said, the heavens declare the glory of God. Here you see it. Scientists find seven possible sisters of planet Earth. They're like us, seven of them. All right, let's go on to this next one. Newly discovered network of planets could harbor life. My, oh, my. Now, the star encircled by, there's a star in the middle, encircled by seven Earth-like bodies. The scientists are just without anything that they can really say as far as what happened. Seven Earth-sized planets found orbiting dwarf star. And oh my, praise the Lord that we serve a God who's created all of that and that we just don't know what's out there. My oh my, one day when we go to be with him, we're going to see things we can't even imagine. Dr. Williams, does that not excite your heart? Oh, it really excites me. It excites me because Jesus talked about signs in the heavens as we approach the last days. And I think this is one of those signs. There's yes. something, Rexella, very interesting uh, going on. We know that there's coming a day when suddenly millions are going to vanish from this planet. Yes. It's called the rapture, the harpazo in the harpazo in the Greek language, raptus in the mm -hmm. in the Latin language. It's when the church age ends, when this parenthetical age, the church age ends, and then we go into a time of 
Jacob's trouble, it's called, a time where Jesus described it as being tribulation. But the discovery of these planets is so yes. interesting that it was just now because New Age writers, uh, some of the top New Age and occultist writers are saying that planet Earth is about to go through a time of cleansing that will lead into a golden age of peace and harmony. Ah. There will be a, the, one of these convergences again. And they say that uh, those that are not of Earth's harmony are not going to be able to stay on the planet. Yeah. Those that are not of Earth's harmony, because those that are not of Earth's harmony are hindering the convergence of peace and harmony on the Earth. So they're going to be beamed off the Earth and taken somewhere else for indoctrination. And if you can believe this, they say they'll be gone for seven years and then they'll be back after being re-indoctrinated so that we harmonize with Earth's harmony. Ah, uh -huh. Now, we know we're going to be going. <clears throat> yes. And now with these planets that were discovered that can possibly support human life, they could easily say, well, that's where they were taken, to uh -huh. these planets where they're being reindoctrinated, and then they'll come back. But you and I know what it is. It's the catching away of right, the church. Right. And it is all prophesied, all these signs in the heavens, and there's some more scheduled for uh, this year, 2017, some more very interesting things uh, that astronomers are yes. telling us are going to happen in the skies yes. this year. Well, the scientists, they always try to explain it. You know, they, they, they have to find an explanation for it. But the Lord said it in the beginning. And, you know, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. There you go. We mm -hmm. can either believe God's word or believe something else. There are people in these UFO cults that believe that an alien came down to earth and impregnated Mary. Yes. And, that was, and that's what they really believe. Well, doesn't the Bible say the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine? That's they can't right. believe that the Virgin Mary was overshadowed by the Holy Spirit and she gave birth to this holy child, Jesus, who became our Savior, died on the cross and rose from the dead. But they can believe in UFOs and aliens. Yes, there you go. That, well, that's, you know, they can rationalize all that out, figure it all out. They can rationalize it. But there's another interesting thing, Rexella, is... Enoch did some writing, the prophet Enoch, the one that was the yes, first yes. raptured in the Old Testament. And in his writings, it's not scripture, it's apographa, but uh, in his writings, he talks about this class of angel called Ophanim. There are cherubim, seraphim, and Ophanims, and the Ophanim in the Hebrew is wheel. And in Ezekiel chapter 1, he saw this wheel within a wheel with all these uh, eyes around it. The uh -huh. UFO people say that's a UFO. But apparently there was a class of angel, and some of these could have been fallen angels, mm -hmm. a class of angels that looked like what today we would call a flying saucer. Ah. Isn't that interesting? Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> The things you're coming up with now. I know. <laughs> well, you know what? Something else that has just been discovered. And to me, this is a, really a blessing. Take a look, if you will, please. New Dead Sea Scrolls Cave Discovered. Now, here you see it. Uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls. And you know what? The priceless records include more than 800 documents written in Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek, mostly on animal skin and papyrus. And you know what? The first Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered in 1947. Can you believe that one? And uh, certainly uh, it is uh, a witness and a backing up of everything that the Jewish people had to say. The Dead Sea Scrolls. I've been to the Dead Sea. You've been to the yes. Dead Sea. It's very, very interesting to go over there. And uh, actually, can I can almost envision them finding this Dead Sea Scroll. But, you know, it is so wonderful to know that they have found something to back up everything that the Jewish people had to say. Everything. And we owe so much to the Jewish people, the way they were meticulous in copying the Old Testament down for us and yes. even the Jewish writers of the New Testament copied them down word for word so we've got 
the Word of God that we can study, believe, yeah. and get our doctrine from. But one thing we must remember, doctrine wasn't just meant to be studied, it was meant to be experienced. And some of you uh, watching today, you may not have ever been born again. You don't even know what that is about. It's just a doctrine, right? Well, it's a doctrine that's meant to be experienced. It can only be experienced by receiving Jesus into your life. And Rexel and I will give you an opportunity to do that yes. at the close of this program. Absolutely, we will. That's why we're here. That's why we're we here. We want people to have the peace of the Lord in these troublesome times. And after you actually be uplifted by some of the things we've just given you. To me, the heavens declare the glory of God, and now they have found the Dead Sea Scrolls. To me, that's wonderful. Well, you know what? Israel is still a target of hostility. That kind of puzzles me sometimes because uh, they don't deserve that. Hostility and extremist groups, they're all after Israel. Take a look, if you will, please, at this headline. Amid internal threats, Hamas may seek escalation with Israel. Now Hamas and Israel both talk about not wanting a war, but they're both preparing for it. You know, they both know it's coming. Egypt, Jordan say two-state solution is non-negotiable. In other words, they're saying, don't even talk about it anymore. We have to establish a Palestinian state. And Nas Nasrallah warns, we can hit Israel's nuclear reactor in Dimona, the Hezbollah terrorist organization warned Israel it could strike anywhere in their country. Unbelievable. Nasrallah, Hezbollah will have no red lines in the next war with Israel. They're not even giving them a chance to explain how they feel. Alande, France insists on a two-state solution. Now, you know, that uh, puzzled me, but we all know that in the end, the European Union is going to be on the side of Israel. They're going to back them up for what is right. But does surprise me from now, now and once in a while, you hear about France sort of uh, siding in with the other group. But I know that they're going to be on the side of Israel. But right now, we're seeing Israel in the headlines all the time, Dr. Williams, and so much hatred for them. Hard, hard for me to understand. Well, Israel is really the epicenter. I think it was uh, Joel Rosenberg that talked about Israel, or Jerusalem, actually being the epicenter. And it is the epicenter for prophecy. Whenever yes. we read prophecy, we read it as if we were standing in Israel. If it talks about the north, it's not talking about the north of Canada. It's talking about the north of, of Israel. And you know, uh, the Palestinian, most of the Palestinian people that I know are the most beautiful, hospitable, and wonderful people that you could ever meet. Just genuine, uh, genuinely nice people. And most of them want Jewish control of Israel, not Palestinian control. That's true. It isn't really the Palestinian people as much as it is the Islamic leaders that are stirring up these hate groups against Israel. Palestine, there really was no such thing mm -hmm. until after 70 AD when Titus went in and destroyed uh, Jerusalem and the Jews were dispersed, the Jewish people were dispersed. They, the Roman government named it Palestine because it sounded like Philistine, yes. and the Philistines were Israel's most bitter enemies, and so they really wanted to humiliate the Jewish people, so th the Romans named it Palestine. It was never, Palestine was never really a nation. It's always been Israel. Yes, absolutely. Well, you know, it, it doesn't surprise me because in the end, we all know that Israel is loved of the Lord and therefore is hated of Satan. You can't have both. You know, oh. if Satan, if the Lord loves, Satan hates. And certainly I believe from the bottom of my heart, this is one reason that Israel today is not loved over there because he is loved by God. She is loved by God. She's loved by God and God promised in Deuteronomy to go ahead of Israel when Israel followed God's plan and God's purposes, he said, I'll go ahead of you and you, 
you won't even have to battle. I'm going to take care of Amen. it for you. Amen. Yes. Amen. Isn't that glorious? <laughs> well, you know, friends, how good it is to know that we can be a friend of God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. How wonderful to have a connection with God Almighty, the Father of our Savior. Well, it's, it brings me to our wonderful offer of the week, which is eternity. Who, where, when, and why. All about eternity. Take a look, please, at our promo. Eternity, who, where, when, why, is the most astounding biblical video study ever produced by doctors Jack and Rexella Van Epi. Out of hundreds of predictions prophesied, the greatest and final sign is about to happen when Christ returns as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The event is about to happen, even at the door. Could it occur in 2017 or 18? Be ready. Why? Eternity is forever. Here are seven of the numerous questions answered on this video. One, which of the world's religions is the only one that can get you to heaven? Two, what do most people today believe about heaven and hell? Three, what form did Jesus have before he came to earth, spirit or bodily? Four, what is the rapture? And what will happen to our bodies at the time of the rapture? Five, how could the Old Testament saints get to heaven if Christ's blood had not yet been shed? Six, how can we be saved from death, the grave, and assured of heaven? Seven, could Jesus return in our generation? Order this all-important video today. Oh, yes, eternity is such a very, very important topic because it involves all of us. One day, all of us will be in eternity. I've said it so many times on this program, and you need to know where you're going, and you can know where you're going if you really pay attention to what Jack has to say on this wonderful, wonderful video. So please, there's the 800 number and there's the address. Make the call right away. We'll get it in the mail as soon as we hear from you. Eternity, whoo, when, why, all on here. All right, friends, we're going to quickly go on here to something. My, oh, my, our time goes so quickly, <laughs> Brother Williams. Well, here are some of the headlines telling us that the persecution, friends, of Christians is still on the rise. It's growing more than ever around the world. And here it, it expresses it so very, very well. Islamist rebels execute Christian pastor. Well, all they did was stab him right in his own church. Torch churches in Central African Republic. Here we go on. Boko Haram has murdered 100,000, displaced 2 million in war to wipe out Christianity in Nigeria. And ISIS releases new video calling for slaughter of Egyptian Christians. Oh, my. In France, anti-Christian attacks rise 245%. I'll never get over this picture. When will the shooting stop? They're running for their lives over there, friends. Running for their lives. And here you see it. The great tragedy of South Sudan. Years of suffering and violence led to the creation of South Sudan in 2011. Now, more fighting threatens to kill it. The story of how a young republic escaped Christian persecution then quickly devolved in civil war and is going on with the drama marked by danger, death, and the staunch determination of the region's Christians and refugees. Did you get that? The staunch determination. They're going to keep going. They don't care if they're put to death. How wonderful what their reward will be like when they stand before the Lord. They're going to receive a great reward one day, Dr. Williams. They are. And in fact, the whole eastern leg of the Roman Empire was Christian. And systematically throughout the years, uh, they came in and persecuted, tortured Christians, and some horrible things we don't even want to talk about on television until the whole eastern leg of the Roman Empire was Islamic. Right. And I always have two verses that I like to go to. John 10.10 10 is a great divide. How do you know what is God and what is not God? The thief came to steal, kill, destroy. Yes. If there's killing, stealing, and destroying, it's the devil. 
Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. And then in John 15, uh, Jesus said, if they've hated me, they're going to hate you. That's right. And if they've persecuted me, they're going to persecute you. Yeah. But in verse 21, he tells why. He said, because they know not him who sent me. People that persecute Christians are those that don't really know God. Yeah. And we, we have to remember that Saul, who became the great apostle Paul, was technically a terrorist. Yes, he was. He was murdering Christians. He had a part in Stephen's murder. And, and God got a hold of Saul and he became St. Paul. And that can happen to you. Maybe you feel like you're just nothing. God can turn you into a saint in a second, and we'll tell you how in just a few minutes. Oh, how wonderful that is to know how God changes lives. He does. Not only forgives us of our sins, but he forgets. Their sins and iniquities will I remember no more, God says, once you come to Christ. Well, you know, Jack has a great burden on his heart that in our churches, the pastors are giving the people something to build them up. I admire these Christians. They're willing to die for the Lord. But so many of our churches now, here in the United States, in Europe, they're empty. As I mentioned, you know, when we've been in Europe, they're empty. How wonderful if they would get something in church to build them up. Jack made a huge statement not long ago. I'd like for you to hear it, please, right now. Even the evangelicals aren't living for the Lord as they should and are eliminating certain doctrines. In 1929, the fundamentalists of America said, you must believe these five things or you'll never see the inside of heaven. And we've got so many of you pastors, now evangelicals, bunk! And only a fundamentalist evangelical counts. And they believe these five points, Christ is the eternal God. Second member of the Trinity. Secondly, he was virgin born. Thirdly, his blood and blood alone shed at Calvary can save the soul. Fourthly, he was raised from the dead. And finally, he's coming back and soon. Oh, amen. And these men are deviating from this. And I don't care how many years they preach. If they don't believe those five things, they'll never see the inside of heaven. And in Second Timothy, 3.13, it says, evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. That's why Matthew 24, verses 5, 11, and 24 state, there shall be false Christ and false prophets. And the churches of Jesus Christ are loaded with them. You know what you men of God, if you're men of God, need to do? Get into this book. Second. Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And Psalm 119.11 says, thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you, because that's what some of you are doing right now with all of your confusion. Oh, folks, what is wrong with these ministers today? Don't they know the first commandment? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. None, none. There's 1,600 cults out there right now, and every one of them denies Jesus. You're not going to get to heaven that way. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man, no man can come unto the Father but by me. Let's go a little farther. Acts 4.12, neither is there salvation in any other. There is no other name under heaven whereby we must be saved, and that name is Jesus. And when he comes back and sets up his kingdom on earth, Philippians 2.10 says, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And if you don't do that now, You'll never do it then. You'll miss heaven. Oh, thank God for that wonderful message from Jack. I wish that we could give you even more. But what a great buildup it is. And, and, and to know that this is why the churches are empty. They're not getting this kind of message, the kind that leads to an invitation saying, if you'll accept the Lord as your Savior, 
if you open your heart to the Son of God. He'll give you the peace that you want, and he will forgive you of your sins. Will you do that even now? In just a moment, Dr. Williams is going to lead us in prayer. And I pray that you will pray with him, asking Jesus to be your Savior. No matter what is in your life, you'll be forgiven. Will you pray this prayer with him, Dr. Williams? Do you know why we need a Savior? We need a Savior because we have all sinned. We have all fallen short of the standards of God, and God is a holy God. Not one sin can ever make it into heaven. That's why the sin has to be off of us before we leave this life. And God gave a solution. He sent His Son, Jesus, 100% God and 100% man, to die on the cross, be raised from the dead, ascend to heaven, and promise to come back again. And He said, you must be born again. If you don't know what it means to be born again, it means to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. Then you become a son and daughter of God. Pray this with me. Say, Father in heaven, I have sinned and fallen short of your standard, and I ask you to forgive me. I believe Jesus died on the cross for me. I believe he was raised from the dead, and I receive him as my Savior and Lord right now. Thank you, Father. I have a home in heaven and a brand new start in life beginning now. Amen. Amen and amen. I trust that you prayed that prayer with Dr. Williams. And if you did, please write to me. There's my address. I want to hear from you. This is the message that we need for this mess age. How wonderful to know when we receive Jesus, we have eternal life. I'll send you this little book of first steps in a new direction. It will help you in your new walk with the Lord, and he'll help you to overcome anything in your life that you don't want there. All right, friends, this leads me to, once again, our wonderful offer of the week, eternity. Who, where, when, why? Here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella, my friend, to order eternity. Who, where, when, and why? Have your credit card ready and call toll-free. 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impe Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impe Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now back to Rex Eller. Thank you so very much, Chuck. Please do not put this off because, as I've said so many, many times, you need to have this. In fact, give it to the one you love the most in this life. If they don't know the Lord, they will certainly accept Christ if they watch this. So make the order right away. There's the 800 number. Make the call. And, you know, friends, I want to leave you with a wonderful thought. Even in life's darkest hour, Christians have the brightest hope. Oh, my, how true that is. Look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye.